Good evening. Uh, next weekend, Sunday will be on the 24th. And so on the 24th, we will have our normal worship services, 9 at Monroe City, 1030 at Shelbina. And then that evening, we will have Christmas Eve services, 6 o'clock at Shelbina, 9 o'clock in Monroe City. For those of us who are traveling on Christmas Eve, uh, there is a Traveler's Christmas Eve on the 21st, this Thursday, at Shelbina. I hope that you can make it to one of these Christmas Eve services, uh, be it candlelight, communion, Christmas carols. It will be, um, it will be good. I don't think there are any other announcements we need to make, because here we go, Christmas is coming. If I was given a gift, wrapped, bow on top, you know, gift, what would become of that gift if I never unwrapped it? If I just let it sit there, shuffle, maybe shuffle it off, off into a closet after a while, turn it into a footrest, right? Just ignore it. Is it still a gift? It's a gift that's offered. What if I don't receive it? There is a, a choice that we have to make when we're offered a gift. We have to choose to receive the gift or else it isn't really a gift at that point. It's just something that's been offered and we haven't received it. And for the most part, we, we say yes, we, we accept gifts. I, I don't usually find myself thinking as someone offers me a gift of, of oh, here, Andy, I don't usually th th think to myself, oh, do I accept this or not? Do I unwrap it or not? Or yeah, We don't tend to decline gifts, but it's worth noting that there actually is a moment where we have to choose to accept a gift that is offered. We have to unwrap it. Um, and if someone doesn't unwrap it, it's not like we can force them. I mean, you could try. I once thought about trying to have my youth group do this. Um, I realized that would probably go very poorly if I gave half of them gifts and said, okay, now force the other half to accept the gift, force them to unwrap it. It would have been really funny for about, oh, 30 seconds, and then someone would have gotten hurt. It would have been bad. The point being, right, when we're offered a gift, we have to choose to accept it, choose to unwrap it, choose to take it and say, ah, this is now mine, I'm accepting this. This is the type of moment we find uh, today, mul multiple places actually in scripture. We're gonna begin with this moment in Exodus, it's Exodus 12. This moment when the Hebrew people have been offered a gift, right? They have endured slavery and, and now they're going to be freed from slavery to go into the promised land to learn uh, what it means to be uh, God's people. They have been, they have been enduring this, this year of plagues and judgments upon Egypt. Thus far, there have been nine of them. And uh, there have been these confrontations between Moses and Pharaoh again and again. And this last judgment, the tenth plague, is about to hit. And it's going to be a doozy. It's going to be hard. And so as this last judgment is about to hit, they are told to prepare a meal. Passover. They're told to prepare this meal, that it's such an important meal, this, this gift that they're being given, right? that they will begin their year with this from now on, that the month of Passover, with Passover will be the first month of the year. Um, all right, so this is, this is going to be a really big deal, and they're going to leave slavery behind and begin to learn to be God's people. And we'll look at Passover at some length next week and the meal itself. But what, what is crucial to notice right now is that they had to choose to do this. Right? They, they are being given this, this gift that the rest of their lives are going to be changed, but, but for them to accept this gift, they need to stop, and they need to make this meal, roast this lamb, and then some of the other side dishes that go with it. They roast this lamb, and they need to take a branch of hyssop and dip it into the blood of the lamb and mark the door frame, the, the crossbar, the door frame of their building with this blood such that that night when the tenth plague strikes they will be passed over and that last plague man it was a sad night in Egypt but for the Hebrew people they have chosen to accept this gift chosen to accept a new future chosen to, to, to unwrap it and, and off they go the next day they go off into the wilderness um, right? It's this moment that God's people, they, they accept a grace, a gift they're given. 
And it's a lesson that they, are, they remind themselves of. It's in the second place. We're looking at three places in Scripture. In the second place, it's in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy um, is, comes at this moment after they've left slavery and they've entered the wilderness and they have learned. They've been given the Ten Commandments and then they've been practicing living as God's people. And it has taken a while. It takes a long time to go from being former slaves to being God's people. Um, it took an entire generation. It took 40 years. They had to have children and raise those children into a new way of life before it sank in. And that's, well... Isn't that how it is sometimes, right? Things change when you have children and raise them into a new reality, and they kind of pull you along. Uh, it, it's, that's what happens, right? So that, that's covered in the book of Exodus and in Numbers, covers this time in the wilderness. And then we come to Deuteronomy. Deutero means second, nomos means teaching or law. And, and so what, what's happening in Deuteronomy is they're looking at the teaching again. How is this going to work as they're entering the promised land, as they go through the River Jordan on the other side of the River Jordan, they're going to be in the promised land, and they're taking a second look at the law, Deutero, Deutero Nomos, second look at the teaching, and saying, we've, we've figured out how to live according to God's teaching as a nomadic uh, people. Now, how, do we, how are we going to live this? What's it going to look like practically, like nuts and bolts? What's this going to look like when we're farmers, when we're settled down? And in the middle of, uh, and this is, this is the beginning of something that continues to this day. Every Jewish, every generation of the Jewish people is entrusted and charged, tasked to read the, the law, the teaching, the nomos, the Torah, right? All the same words, right? To read it again and say, how do we live this today? Because today is different than yesterday. And so how do we live it today? This application of the law to right now. And in the middle of Deuteronomy, we read that this is a choice they're going to make. It's in Deuteronomy uh, 30, 16. If you obey the teaching, the commandments of God, that I'm commanding you by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, observing his commandments, decrees, ordinances, then you shall live. The Lord your God will bless you. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, you are led astray. I declare to you that you shall perish. So I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death. Choose life so that you and your, may, your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, holding fast to him, for that means life to you, so that you may live in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a choice, right? They're in the middle of hashing through uh, what is it going to look like to live by the Torah, the teachings of God in the promised land? And they are reminded they have to choose to do this. They've been given the gift of this land. They've been given the gift uh, of the teaching on how to live, and they need to figure out how to apply it. But like to unwrap the gift, to accept the gift, to live, the, the gift is going to change how they, how they live, but they have to actually choose. We're going to accept the, this, this gift. And again, to this day, the Jewish people celebrate Torah as a gift. There's a holiday they call Simshat Torah, where uh, it's, it comes at the, when they, every year, the uh, Jewish people read all the way through the five books of Moses in worship. Um, and when they get through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, after they've read through those five, they get to the end, and, and they're going to start again. They're going to go back to Genesis, and they're going to start again. And, and on that, that Shabbat, on that Sabbath, they take the Torah scroll, and the rabbi leads them, and they dance. Like, the worship, it, they, they dance through the aisles of the sanctuary with the Torah scroll because they're celebrating what a gift it is, and they're accepting that this is a gift, unwrapping the gift, so to speak. And then, and then they begin again with Genesis, because this is a gift that they have chosen to accept, and they choose to accept every time they gather <clears throat> as a Jewish people. And when, then we come to this, the third place I want to touch down on in Scripture. We come to the beginning of the New Testament. And, and what happens um, as we go from the Old Testament, right? In the Old Testament, we're, 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 it feels like we're never too far away from these big zoomed out shots of like the entire Hebrew people leaving Egypt, 
for the entire Hebrew people going to the promised land. They're, they're big moments. They might have like zoom in to look at one person for a bit, but it's, the Old Testament is full of these big moments of entire people, entire nations. And the New Testament zooms way in, and, and we're looking just at one person or a few people at a time. And we zoom in at the beginning of, of Matthew, and we zoom in on one person who's about to make this choice. Right? And we zoom in on, on, on Joseph. And Joseph is told, um, it's in Matthew 1.18, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph before they lived together, before they were married, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit, her husband Joseph being a righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, what did he do? He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. But that was his choice. You can hear the gift that is offered. Right? Here, child. Have a child. Great child. Right? Here's your gift. But he has to make a choice what he's going to do with that gift. He didn't have to accept it. He could have put Mary aside. Just could have walked away. He stays, thankfully. He, he, he will unwrap the gift. He will accept this child. And he becomes, in doing so, the second person to say yes to Jesus. It's always worth remembering that the first person with Jesus, the first person to say yes to Jesus is his mother. The first disciple, so to speak, is his mom. And, and the first people to proclaim Jesus' resurrection. Again, women who were the disciples, one, his mom, right? So, very cool. But these are the choices that we read of in Scripture today, the, the, accepting the, the choice to, to mark the, the doorframe with the blood of the Lamb, the choice, choose life today, choose to follow this teaching, and you will live long in the promised land. And, and with uh, Joseph, this choice, cho choose to accept this gift to this child and name him Jesus. What is our choice today to accept this gift, this gift that we celebrate, the, the first gift of Christmas, we might say? I don't think we need to go home and mark our doors, our door frames, with the blood of a freshly slaughtered lamb, the logistics of which, of doing that, would just be a bit challenging today. I'm not quite sure how I'd pull it off, even if I wanted to, but I just don't, I don't think that's our answer. It is worth taking notice, however, of one part of how Passover is celebrated. It's always in the present tense. Passover is always, to this day, celebrated in the present tense. The Lord our God frees us from slavery today. That's how the story is told as Jewish people gather and gave us Torah right, so we can be his people. And it's that same sense of today that we read in Deuteronomy, that Deuteronomy 30, this moment where choose life, you choose life. It's not like a sense of y'all back in, uh, just y'all back in, in the biblical times as in the wilderness, you choose life. No, you who are reading this to right now, you who are hearing these words, these words of Torah, you, you choose life. You choose to follow the teaching of God. That is your choice today. Right? And I think it is that, that sense of that present tenseness right now, I think is important to hold on to. How do we have that sense of present tense? How do we unwrap this gift today, right now, here, as part of our life together? We choose to welcome this child whose birth we celebrate as being our Lord. And uh, as with Passover, I said, it's a present tense thing. And, and I think the, the way we hold on to this is with a sense of that we are baptized and that has a present reality right now. Right? The way that Daniel Erlander talks about this, Daniel Erlander was a pastor on the East Coast, a Lutheran fellow, and he had this, this way with words I'm just amazed and fascinated with. And he talks about how when we are baptized, from the moment we are baptized, from that time forward, 
from that time forward, we are living wet, right? The waters of baptism, in a sense, they don't dry off. We are living wet. To accept baptism is to accept a gift that changes every day that follows. Every day that follows from that day forth, we are part of this this church family. We are part of the people who follow Jesus. We are wet with the waters of baptism. and, and, And because of this, we follow Jesus each day and following his lead and accepting and unwrapping, unwrapping Torah, following his lead and, and unwrapping the, the teaching of, of what God desires, right? We unwrap the gift of Christmas, the first gift, the most important gift of Christmas, the gift of the child who's born at Christmas as we are baptized into following him. And we are baptized into following him not in a sense that it once happened and wasn't that nice, we got wet, we dried off, we move on. No, we are baptized and we are living wet today. Thanks be to God. Amen.